we heard from the Chancellor of the Exchequer when he gave that, those remarks that there was some headroom, I believe he called it, that was built in for the possibility mm. of a disorderly Brexit. That would be a nice thing to have access to that headroom if you're in the government. If this goes into the summer, which is possible, I know you want a short extension, but there's a possibility it would go longer. What does that do for your maneuverability as a government? Well, the key thing is right, and it, it is that you're absolutely right. We have this headroom, which is the headroom we have between where the economy is at the moment and meeting our fiscal targets. And that's about £26 billion. I'm guessing that's about 30 odd billion dollars. And clearly, in the event that we can get this deal nailed down sooner rather than later, then that is uh, finance that we can deploy doing all the good things we want to do in our economy around uh, the health and policing and education and all those things, rather than having to hold it in reserve uh, to uh, deal with what could be a no-deal situation and the uncertainty and the potential uh, weight on the economy that that will result in. So that's just yet another one of those arguments as to why I believe that members of parliament here in the UK should be uh, passing this deal, uh, removing the uncertainty and allowing us to use that fire power in a more productive way than we'll otherwise uh, be required to do. So I'm pleased to say you're a member of that parliament, so you understand the way it works. As I understand it, if we're over here, you can't vote on that deal again because Mr. Bokrow, your sec as your Speaker of the House, has said you can't vote on the deal again. So what's the way around that? Is there a way around that to actually have the existing deal okay. re-voted on or do you have to change the deal and is that doable? Okay, so we've already had two so-called meaningful votes, the second of which was distinctly different from the first, in the sense that it had renegotiated elements that we'd got in place with the European Union. So I think that illustrates that it's not inconceivable that there could be another meaningful vote that will come back, that once again we'll have something perhaps coming out of the Council meetings with the EU uh, tomorrow and Friday uh, that could put us in a position where we have once again another offering. The other thing, of course, is that Parliament is sovereign, and if Parliament decided, for example, to change some of our standing orders, which are the kind of, is the rule book by which uh, Parliament operates, then it would under some circumstances perhaps be possible for something to come back that's quite similar to what we'd considered uh, before. But all of this is speculation uh, and uh, there is a great deal of uncertainty as to exactly where we're going to land but the government's focus at the moment is very clearly on getting enough time there uh, renegotiated with the EU such that we have time to sort these things out and make sure that we get that deal through and get the stability the business wants as a result. No question that speculation but <laughs> we're delighted to say you would be in the position to give us informed speculation between the possibilities of the European Union actually changing its mind, which it said it's not going to, no more negotiations, no way, no how, on the one hand, changing its mind and changing the deal on the one hand, and invoking the time-honored rule the Parliament cannot bind itself so it can change its own rule, which is more likely? It's very difficult because whilst we've, you've presented two possibilities there, there are also probably another dozen or so possibilities. I've just learned that there's a, a motion that's gone down in the House of Commons this afternoon to be considered by the Speaker, which would not actually be binding on the government, but nonetheless is saying it's the will of Parliament that we go for or request from the European Union a very long extension uh, to our arrangements with the EU. In other words, that we, we, we don't leave the European Union for a, a long period of time. Um, if that goes through through, if it's granted by the Speaker, uh, how will we respond as a government? Um, we'll have to see what the motion says and so on. So there are so many strands to this. It's really very difficult to point your finger at one particular thing and say that's more or less likely to happen than the others, other than to say that there's only one way forward, it seems to me, in which we avoid the uncertainty of coming out with, uh, without a deal and the, the uh, effects that that, I think, would have on the economy. And we honour the results of the 2016 referendum, i.e we actually leave the European Union uh, on the terms that the government's negotiated, and that is to have the deal. So the clock is ticking. Friday of next week is in the right. absence of an right. extension, in the absence of uh, agreeing the deal. That's when right. we will leave without a deal. So yep. parliamentarians are really having to focus on this now. Right.